Because how long can we live? The oldest person probably 100 years old, right? But how old, how long can you live? That's what we hear because of His presence. It doesn't matter what environment we act. We start small. That is not small because when we sing sometimes a large crowd but don't have the Spirit of the Lord presence. But you, once you open your mouth, you say, God invite us here. In my in this present, and he's here. He not just come one. He come the cold angel, the army of angels here. You know, when every time you ask his present, he sent the whole army of angels here. You don't see it because what? We have opened our mind, our heart, and the spirit world. We have the advantage of our Pentecostal. It just we embrace the spiritual world. Traditional, they don't. Put that embrace in the spiritual world. But what we hear because of the spiritual world, we, we face the spiritual world. What it is now? Okay, Jay, come on, sit down. Sit down, Jay. Oh, no, sit down. Um, where's the clicker? Where's the clicker? Uh, okay, I have my clicker. <laughs> Today, I just wanted you guys to learn just a short scripture. Which uh, when uh, very rich today, and I want everybody to take home one of this lesson today. 
um, before we play uh, badminton, which is our favorite games, and everybody's favorite games, and hopefully, and you invite more friends coming over and play badminton. The number one thing we hear for, because uh, the scripture says, there are many who are insubordinate, empty talker and deceiver. Give me an example, who are the, what kind of empty talker? What is empty talker? Yeah, you say something that's not holding water. Just like you have a, 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 a bottle, but you have a hole underneath. Water to keep you in, but that can work. That's kind of empty pocket. But the dangers of an empty pocket is the deceivers. Deceiver. What is the deceivers? The deceiver that's trying to convince you something, but not for something in a good purpose, but in a negative. Yes? A demon? demon, yes. Evil. Can you see the evil? Can you see demon? No. No. But the, the devil tell you what? They see you, right? They see your flesh. Can you do things bad? Let's say a, a deceiver say, okay, this Sunday, I feel so painful in my body. I don't want to get up. But who said that? Is that you? Who? Satan. Satan. Right. A lot of times we didn't pay attention to that because we just think it's just so simple. Our life is not just such this body and whatever you see in your eyes. Whatever you see in your eye, not really you see what you see. Because can you see the wind? No. Can you see how you breathe out? No, you don't. Until something happens, then we know. So the deceiver is the one that tries to convince you something that's not good. So Paul said this, the credence, look at verse uh, 12, the credence, a prophet of their own said, credence are always a liar, evil beasts, lazy potents. This testimony is true, therefore rebuke them sharply. So when something happens to you, you rebuke them sharply. Let's say, your friend say, this Sunday, let's go shopping and buy something for something special. And that person invite you right at the time you go to church. You say, well, next week I still can go to church. Church still there, church not go away. God is still there, God not go away. So that's how you compromise yourself. But if you keep doing that, it becomes a routine. So, in this way, Cretans are an example of the liar, that's an evil. In your life, always two sides of evil, good and evil. We have a, a good side and a bad side. How do you know which one good, which one bad? Until you find the action, right? What will that person say? I can go and smooth talk with you. you. You know how people smooth talk? I can smooth talk with you easily. People can smooth talk with you. So how, you guys know how to smooth talk? Have you, you guys received those smooth talk? You know how to smooth talk? Can anybody give an example of how to smooth talk? You guys drink smoothie? <laughs> Yeah, smooth talk. Yeah, not not everybody, you know, because some people say good stuff, but it's good. Okay, it, it's a good thing. But some smooth talk, their purpose is how they take the action. Because like people say, I love you, but the action is not really right. The action, like, okay, I really right. You you saw that you met that person. They smooth, but the action is not really. You say you love me, but you do something that I'm not really sure you do. Yeah. So that's why the true one is the one show the action. So your action is what? It speaks louder. 
Now, in our life, the number one action that all you go to church all year long, the number one is called obey. Obedience. You know why the, the reason Adam and Eve get kicked out from the God Eden? Why? They didn't obey, that's right. The reason, the number one, they didn't obey because they want to do what? Smart. Smart? Mm -hmm. They want to follow demons. They want to follow demons? They want to be like God, that's right, that's what the Bible says. They want to be there, be God. Number one thing in our life, because we want to be God. You know what the word atheist? That's the word of I want to be God. That's the word atheist is. Because if you don't believe there is somebody create you, somebody above you, that means you are your own God. I said this before, right? Let's say you were born in a family. Let's say born in a wind family. And you say, no, I don't have a mother, I don't have a father. That's me what? You deny you have somebody above you, born you. In the same way, Adam and Eve got kicked out from God of Eden because they didn't obey, they didn't submit. They said, hey, I want to be God. I want my own decision. In this one, you get deceived because they want to want to learn whatever they want to learn. A lot of people go to church because they want to learn something, what they want to get out of it. Let's say you go to the church because, let's say you want to be rich. Some people like to go to church because they want to be rich, because that church teach about how to be prosperity. And you keep go to that church because, oh, I want to hear that to have more money. So that's our main purpose. But the, 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 it's nothing wrong to be rich, nothing wrong to be wealthy, but it's just a wrong motive. Our life is the same thing. A lot of times we do things, we get people deceived, not outside, but our own. We deceive our own life. We make our own life as a deceiver. I guess we call it deceive. Or deceiver, <laughs> deceiver, the own and deceiver, somebody else. So we are the one who gets deceived. So a lot of time, you fool your own life, not other one else, because you are the one who makes the decision. You make the decision to come to church because of you, not other. So now today, I want to get this lesson because on the the last verse, I want you guys to learn this. To be. Not devoting themselves to a myth and command to people who turn away from the truth. The truth in the Bible, the Word of God. So all people saying things that not to the Bible, but they teach the thing that they want to teach. Like uh, you talk about the myth, mythological story, non-fiction story, those not true. Like uh, everybody liked in the movie uh, uh, Harry Potter, you know, that movie is not real. But people like it, they want to learn those things. And they turn out to be religiously to know Harry Potter things. So those, that's what we're talking about, that turn away from the truth. Anything that myth or non-fiction is turned away from the truth. Now, verse 15. To the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They confess to know God, but they deny by their works. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for any good work. So whatever people say, whatever people do, whatever yourself say, whatever you do, but your action is the one who show the truth. So today, I want to conclude this one for you guys. I want you to make a commitment to God that you should not allow anything in your life deceive you. Other people cannot deceive you. You cannot deceive yourselves if something not belongs to God. Because God knows what's best for you. Just like I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a dad. I know what's best for my children. They don't know what's best for them. 
Because I know how I've been through my life. I know what best for them. So I bring best to them. They, a lot of things they don't know. Same thing with our life. We grow up, but God knows what best for your life. God wants you to have peace. God wants you to have joy. God wants you to have a wonderful life. But the problem is, you went through a lot of struggle in your life. Right now, you don't see much of it. But the older you get, the more struggling in your life. What the reason? Because you are the one who get deceived your own life. And others who put things in your head and you listen to it. People tell things that, oh, you should uh, listen to this and that, do this and that, do this and that. But the point is, everything is turned away from God. That means you get out from the protection. Whoever is selling insurance, you know. You sell insurance, you know. Right? If you don't have coverage, that means what? You're on your own. Yeah. If you don't pay the insurance, you're on your own. <laughs> I pray I didn't pay the bill. Because if I don't pay the bill, I pray I don't get coverage. Same thing. If you and I don't have that coverage, you're on your own. I'm sorry to say this. You're on your own. You live probably 60 years, 70, 80 years old, the older you can get. What after that? You're on your own. If you gotta get coverage. I know I got coverage. I got full coverage. And my generation will get full coverage because I consistently believe and discipline myself. A lot of time when I was young, I didn't want to go to church. I don't want to go to church. Someday I should sleep more. Because, you know, every day we have to wake up at 7 o'clock. I don't want to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. I feel tired. I say Sunday, Saturday, Sunday is the time for me to wake up at noon time or afternoon, probably 2 o'clock. That's what your mind is. But no, I disciplined myself when I was young. When I was a teenager, I served God and consistently. And God gave me the discipline in my life. And that's how I become. Not I ask you to become a pastor. But to become a pastor is more advantage, you guys. There's a lot of advantage to become a pastor. You know what? Because when you go to heaven, the pastor is up there. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> no, there's a lot not to go there. But become a pastor, God gives you a discipline. God give me discipline. And I want you to be disciplined, God, whatever it takes. You have a coverage. You know that when you die, you know who saved you. Who in here believe that is afterlife? Have you seen ghosts? Can <laughs> yes. you see God? Ghost? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You know, if you believe there is an afterlife, you know why? Because you saw dead people. People dead, not dead people. You saw people die. And what happened? People die. There's two kinds of people dying. There's a person, I, uh, I, I go to funerals, and I saw a person die with a happy face, and I saw the person die with a very sorrow face, because at the moment on the last breath, it's a battle. It's a battle between God and evil. God said, this soul is belong to me, but that person, their whole life, didn't believe there is an existence of God. So they battle between. Because the devil is not like what you think in your mind, like scary movie with horn and all that kind of thing. They look good. Like wings and stuff, they look good. And you could not understand which one at that time, at that moment, you don't know which one. Because good and evil right next to each other. You don't know what's right. That's why earlier I said, what are the deceiver? What are the smooth talk? The smooth talk look good. Those guys look good. Those ladies look good. They dress very nice. They talk very fancy. They wear wealthy. Those are people who look good. So you don't see the difference. The only thing you different is to know God. That's all. 
God tell you the difference. Because why? He is the one who created you and I. Doesn't matter how bad you are, doesn't matter how worse you are, doesn't matter how sinful you are, you are the one He created. He created all of us. We are not just suddenly happen we here. Not suddenly you sit here. I wasn't born as a Christian. I was born as so called as a, a Buddhist because we just born in Vietnam, we all become a Buddhist. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you suddenly you're born in Vietnam, you're a Buddhist. You know, everybody born in Asia, you become a Buddhist. You worship the ancestors, so that's your religion. But when I grow up, I, I recognize, I said, no, there's something that is more a greater. Not just suddenly happen. We not suddenly happen. You're blessed because your family was born as a Christian. But a lot of us, like me, a lot of you guys, just like me before, we wasn't, I wasn't born as a Christian. I was born, I just said, I'm a Buddhist. And I just keep worship and worship and worship. And one day I said, what is that worship? There's no ending. You worship something tradition that you just get taught by tradition. But you don't never talk by the truth. We taught in the wrong way. Did you know? I can tell you. You go to the Buddhist person or any other religion. You ask them. When you worship Buddha, do you actually know he is? No. I bet you they don't know. Because I, I studied world religion before. I can tell you 8% of people don't know what they worship is. But in our life, as a Christian life, we have a written facts. Christian is not just a religion. We have a history of written. We have in writing in history. When this day, when that day, when that day. All other religions, they have an oral tradition. Buddhists have 700 years of oral tradition, which is they talk verbally, they transfer by one generation to another generation to another generation. Muslim, they have 350 years of oral tradition, which is they transfer with ver verbal. Like, I was born, and then I talked to my kid, my kid talked to my grandkid, my grandkid talked to another person. For 700 years, that Buddhism, 700 years until then, then they have some writing. But in a Christian, right at the moment Jesus was dead, and it's in writing in history, that's what we never get to see because we have a, a written down, but not one person. A lot of people, 500 people saw Jesus depart to heaven in writing. Not just I pass in the word. Moses was put in writing. He saw God in the bushes and in writing in a tablet. And it was in writing. Hebrew is the first language that can be in written form. All other language, you know, the Vietnamese our language, how long was it written? Just a couple of hundred years. Not very long. Our language has been not very long in writing. The longest and oldest language is Hebrew. Because they, uh, in the old time, they put, use the wood, wood chips. They do That's why Hebrew goes this way. So now I tell you, all we hear because we know the fact that we follow the truth and the truth will set all us free. Today we have a free time. You come to God the way you are. I don't care how you dress, how you look, but I care for your heart. We hear because we have a heart of 